and you're back on the chest mount just because I couldn't figure out any other way to do this so don't get used to it. In the last video we finally got around to making the spark plug wires. Now we're back to installing everything we need to be able to crank the engine without using a jumper wire. Starting with the starter button. I'm going to open up. I decided doing it the way that I wanted it to that appealed to my sense of the way things should be was just going to cause too many problems. So I'm going to hog this hole out, make that the starter button, except it's oblong, so I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know how big it needs to go. Let's check that out first. I need to get it to 5 8 which it's three steps away from it. And that would be the battery, of course. I have no idea how old this bit is either should be well past its prime. Yeah, it's biting pretty good now. Try not to block you. One more. Alright, let's see what the No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. So, will this fit? Am I done with the drilling? I am. <laughs> See, I do things, I slap things together half assed. And then they don't work. And then I, while I try to make them work, I end up redoing everything whole ass to make it all fit. And also, I remounted this in its original holder, which I'm not so sure I like, but it is what it is. This all started because I wanted to extend this lead such that I could connect it directly to the battery so this was the power lead for it. And of course it's just a wee bit short. Um, so I can either move the battery over, which the battery does have to move a few inches closer. I don't want to slide it in because it's going to slam into the back of all my answer is get a smaller battery that will sit sideways on this mount so that and then make a block so it can't slide up and hit all this stuff here but again this is my test rig and now that i've done that yes i can cut this little tiny one off and install a large ring to connect directly to the battery because you know that's the way it will always be it's not I do, I admit, I do tend to half-ass stuff to get it working, and all too often it then is left half-ass in the name of, let's just do work. But that's not going to happen this time, so I'm going to cut, cut this off, crimp on a larger one that fits poorly. No, over here, cut that off, and these. This is also not the way I like to do terminals. I prefer to solder them on. 
in theory. Everything's in theory. Well, guess what? I need, I need cutters too. No cutters. Those were cutters. Need a blade. I don't like this color scheme. I now have black as a hot wire. I prefer, and I know some people disagree, I prefer all the hot, all the bad direct battery leads to be red. That way if you know, if you see a red terminal anywhere, you know it's a hot battery. My terminal collection is getting spare, sparse. Is that the right size? No. I don't know if I have the right size to go on the edge. Nope, that does not work. Okay. Why won't that go in the charge again? It's like the battery's not holding the charge, which could be the source of all conflict here. All right. I don't know. I mean, I know that I have them in another box. The reason I don't have any is because it's the most, the size I use the most. So they all get used up. If I can do one of the... I was going to say, I could do one of these terminals, but mm, I'm missing all that size out of there too, because reference my earlier statement and use them all up. This, that's just the right size, all right. Now that needs to go on here. See what I mean? So that's going to be a crimp. It's going to rely on the crimp to make the contact versus you put that in there, you heat it up, you fill it with solder, and now it is a solid never fail contact that you can't pull off. But that is for a different day. These contacts from small wires, I try to crimp down half of it and then make this fold over. But I think I've already crimped it too much. Nope, see, there it folded over. See how it folds over the lower one? I know this is half ass, but it's how I do it. Little tug test. Should unplug the charger because can't really do that one-handed. All right. So what I'd like to do is have power, a light indicating the keys on. I'd like to, but I don't. I like how they install the marker lights in all these wiring diagrams as essentially fuses. Now we're doing bolts. We're testing to there. Here's the side to the battery. Whoa! And that side is on. So the key switch is on. If I turn it that way, then the key switch should be off. So what I should do is go get the damn screws to screw that thing down so it stops moving around. Yeah, because this gets to be too difficult to kajigger with one hand. Man, I almost left that in a shorted state. Really close to it. Let's go with these. That'll be funny. Come back out here. Tractor's burned to the ground. There we go. Because I couldn't F and wait. These are going to have to be replaced. They're way too big for the cover there. All right. Now, this lead goes to the ammeter, right? So 
still can't feel it in the Of course, I need the other connection to do that. And so I should run whatever's going to end up running the, the, um, I think this is going to end up running. Oh God, I hate it. Why did I do that? This is going to run to the ignition because it's a nice long piece, but I don't like that, which I did last night. I recognize. I no shitty handiwork when I see it. I could set you guys up in the tripod to do this. Ah. Probably work better because I'm now working over my head. That switch is off. Let's check that though. That's off. 0.4 volt. I don't know where the hell that's coming from. Oh, well, first of all, I'm reading it off the... I'm reading it off the wrong thing. Read off the back of the ammeter. That switch is off. The switch is on. Yep, we got 13 volts. All right, so off. Okay, power's off at the switch now. What was I doing? Um, this was running. Oh yeah, this was going to the battery before because this is how I was testing it. Um, Ooh, that needs to be taped up. Uh, and if I hook it directly to the battery, the, I can bump the, the motor at any time by hitting that, whether the switch is on or off, which is what I'm not trying to do here. I'm trying to make this so you can only run stuff when it's on. So I need to take this off and put a smaller, smaller connection on there and put it on the back side of the ammeter. So... At that point, the signal runs through the ammeter because yeah, right, uh, the battery is hardwired in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, I'm running out of time with the weather here. I also have not. Uh, what? I haven't done something else too that, that I thought of and it was bril brilliant. Alright. I'm actually going to end up using the ammeter as the terminal block for most of this stuff. My battery almost out. That test didn't work. Uh, I'm getting power to the coil, but I'm not getting spark. So. Um, so the kit I bought <coughs> didn't come with any instructions, and you can't find any instructions for it online, and I strongly suspect it's actually from India, so it's not, not very, very well supported. So all I can really do is pull the coil and test it to see that it puts out what I expect it to put out. And then its internal resistance is correct because I know it's getting power. I need to come up with a better kit for working on this. Oh, that's nice. Now that I've installed everything, you can't get to the screw anymore. Not the right one.
could be. I've got three of these coils now. So generally when I buy stuff, I buy other people's failed projects. Which is why putting stuff together is usually such a headache for me. Because somebody else failed first. And then I need to come along and fix it. 2.7 Right. <clears throat> Let's test some of the other coils and see what we've got. I'll conveniently leave that one out in the rain. So now if I were smart, as I tested these resistances, I'd be writing them on the side of the boxes. That would be the smart thing to do. It's a carburetor. Here's a coil. What coil is it, you ask? I have no idea. It's one of the originals, I think. So I'm betting this is a 6 volt coil. Point seven. Point six, point seven, somewhere around there. Hmm, point five. So point five, point six. So point five to zero point six. I don't really know what that means. But I'm guessing <coughs> with lower resistance probably means it's this. Ignition coil. I thought I'd use the new one, but I guess I didn't. I don't know. That looks used. Yep, that looks used. So I I'd put the used one back in. That's what's going on. So this one is 2.7, Yeah, so I'm guessing that means this is a 12. assume I know what that means ohms. So this is the same as the one that's out there. So these are 12 volt coils. Right. So the next question is, is this 12 volt coil internally resisted or not? If it is internally resisted, then I shouldn't need the ballast resistor. And that could be the problem. All right, thinking. All right, after several hours of troubleshooting, a lot longer than this should have taken me, the problem is the distributor's worn out. I don't know if you're able to see the points gap here. I, I cannot get adjusted to where they close. And the closer I get it to closing, the less travel I get out of the points, which that part I can't figure out. But that's the trouble here. Trouble here. So I've ordered replacement for the distributor. This project is now on hold. On to something else.